Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, we go over how to make a snare bomb. Snare bombs are actually pretty common in the heavy music scene, but you can use them in other genres as well. What it is, is when you take a snare drum one shot, or just a sample of a snare drum getting hit, and you just dump a ton of reverb and a couple other little things on it to have it fill out bigger gaps in the song. This is really common, like I said, in heavy music, when you go into or are within a breakdown. So we're going to go over how to create one inside Studio One using stock plugins. So let's dive into the DAW. Okay, so here we are inside of the session, and this is something I had some drum grooves going on, I put one to halftime, and I just wrote something really dead simple to give us kind of like a chorus into a breakdown like you would hear in a heavy song. This is what it sounds like without the snare bomb. Okay, so this simulates going from a chorus type section into a breakdown. And what I really want to do is fill out the area where there's now this just this big gap in the drums and what they're doing because they're playing in halftime. So I want to create a snare bomb to do exactly that. And I'm talking this section right here. So that very first snare drum sounds pretty good on its own, and I'm doing a ton of really basic processing in this session, but it needs something more. I need that snare to really kind of explode. Snare bomb. So how do we do that? Well, first things first, you got to find somewhere in your system, somewhere online, a snare drum sample, something really nice, something you think sounds really good and fits within your song. Doesn't matter if it's a bright snare, a dark snare, really you can change this however you want. This is the basics of how to create this. So hidden here, I have this snare and I put it in pink just way we can see very clearly which one we're dealing with. If I unmute and solo, this is just the sample. There you go, just a quick and easy little snare sample. Now this is clearly not going to fill in a lot of space, so there's some things we need to do. And I can tell you right now, your best friend when creating snare bombs is reverb. So let's go ahead and pull in a stock reverb. Right now, I'm actually just gonna put this in the inserts on the channel for this snare drum. But we can also do this as event effects if you need to paste this around in different areas or you're just trying to do something where you need the one within your drums. You don't wanna find a sample, pull it into a new track and do all of these things. You can do this with event effects, although you want a clean snare sample. So that's why I'm starting with the plugins on the channel itself. So start off, let's find our reverb. And just to get us going, I'm gonna go with room reverb because that's fine. Now dial in some settings, dial in something kind of long. So three seconds on this reverb, this is gonna be fine. Let's take a listen to this as we just pulled open the default and hear how it sounds. Definitely not bad. Now, you could also do this with your processed snare. So maybe I could do a little processing beforehand and you know what, with some movie magic, let's do just that. I'm gonna do a little bit of processing on this. Cue the fast forward. Okay, I went ahead and fast forwarded through some processing just to kind of beef this snare up a little. I understand this is not a stock plugin. You can do this with stock plugins in your session, but here's a quick before and after. So here's the before and here's the after. So that's going to be our starting point now. Now let's go back and turn the reverb on with our affected snare or our process snare and give it some nice long length. And you can play around with this as much as you want. Dial something in that you like. I'm actually just gonna change this from a large hall to a medium hall. And now let's take a listen. It's gonna kind of trim this down to two seconds. And that's 2000 because this is by milliseconds. 
cool. That's the kind of length and sound I want. I'm cool with this. It's a blend of dry and wet because it by default set 25, this is fine. When you're making your snare bomb, you now wanna follow this up with just some kind of compressor. And you can use the stock compressor and we'll try that first, but I have a feeling I'm probably going to personally like the FET compressor in the FAT channel a little bit more. And I'm gonna show you both ways. Let's start off with just the regular compressor. You want a fast attack time, a fast release time. You want a hard knee. And honestly, we can kind of go a little crazy on this. So I'm going to go eight to one and I'm really just kind of guessing on this. You'll dial it in. If you need a little bit more or less compression, go for it. Honestly, you can crank this up all the way if you really wanted. So let's do that. And now what we're listening for is kind of balancing the direct signal and the reverb so they mesh a little bit nicer together. Okay, so I'm pretty happy right here. I actually slowed the attack down to five milliseconds. I want a little bit of that transient coming through. Yes, we have our ratio all the way up and our release is at the fastest because we want this thing squashed and then out of the way. And that's just to tame that transient, which we're still letting just a tiny amount through because that's what I want right now. And I dialed in the threshold how I needed to to get the amount of compression that I wanted. This is going to change for you because your one shot's going to be different. If you have any processing going on, that's going to change things. So threshold, ignore it. Dial it in on your side. But you want a pretty fast attack. You want a really fast release, crazy heavy on the ratio, and then just dial it in. After this, throw on another reverb. And let's just change it up. Let's go mix verb on this one because using different reverbs will give you different sounds and your own unique snare bomb. Okay, cool. This definitely has the length that I want, but now let's listen to it in the context of everything else that's going on and see if it's where we need it to be. Okay, so we soloed out the drums and our snare bomb, and the really the biggest thing is there's just not enough going on. So you can fix that easily by throwing a mix tool on and just gaining it up to get it where you need it to go instead of coming over here to the fader and pushing it to plus 10. I want my fader around zero anyway in case I need to do some automation. I want the, the flexibility of the fader being at zero so I can just use mix tool after all of my stuff and just gain it up. You can do that too. So let's take a listen to it again, soloed with the drums to see if it's sitting a little bit closer to the volume where we need, and then we'll blend it into the mix. Okay, so we're definitely way closer, and I'm dialing this stuff in really fast. As you're working on yours inside your production, take a little bit more time than I'm doing here. We used the stock compressor before, but I told you that I would probably 
more so prefer the fat compressor inside the fat channel. And that's exactly what I'm going to do for you guys right now. I'm going to put it in the same position as the other compressor, but the other compressor is out. Fat channel is in turning the compressor on uh, fast attack, fast release. Okay. Everything's set to the fastest because on it, the fat compressors, it's all the way to the right. It's fastest for both attack and release. Uh, and you know what? Let's just go all buttons in. I could probably go 20 to one, but I kind of want a little bit of saturation that happens when you have all buttons in. So now I'm going to dial some more compression settings in. So you can see why I actually prefer the FET comp. It's way faster, way easier, way closer to the sound I want, even without changing the reverb sounds or the processing I had going on beforehand. FET compressor, all buttons in, fastest attack, fastest release. Now we have this as our snare bomb, and here it is one more time. And now let's slowly start bringing stuff back in. I'm gonna go back to bar 10. Let's bring our drums in. Now listen. You probably heard it yourself when working with the FET compressor. Yes, my gain structure was different because of the compressor. So I just went to mix tool and took it right off. Then it was way closer to sitting where it needs to be within this at least drum mix. Now let's listen to it in context with everything else. And just for another example of how my snare bomb compares to one that you can find online, because yes, you can find these online. I went over to the Modern Metal Producer group, which I'll put a link down in the description. And for there is some of these samples that you can use in heavy music or anything you want. So I did some more processing or some more production within this to add in a sub drop and one of their snare bombs, which they call splatter. Within this, I just have a sub drop going into this snare bomb and into this breakdown section and then we're just listening to their snare bomb now take a listen and now we'll go back to mine that we made just a little bit ago So you can see by comparing to something that we got from Modern Metal Songwriter and the packs that they have, my snare bomb is really similar. Actually, mine's way longer. I used almost too long of some reverb time. But this is where creating your own and making sure that it dials into your song or production can really be your signature sound on that song that you're working on or that album or whoever, whatever you're working on. So there you go. That's how using stock plugins, you can make your own snare bomb. All you need are a snare one shot sample, something you like. It doesn't have to be from the kit you're using. It can be from anywhere. Tons and tons of reverb, but dial in the reverb time to suit the song you're working on and just some kind of heavy compression. That's really all we need. And you saw my suggestion to you, if you're using Studio One or you have some kind of FET style compressor, go with that. The stock compressor did a good job. The FET compressor just kind of did it more for me. It gave me a little bit of saturation, faster times for attack and release, and just the aggression and the sound I want. It, it was better off for me anyway with the FET compressor. 
That's all for now. If you found anything informative, please like and share the video. Want to talk more production tips? Join the Discord. There's going to be a link down below. Want to work with me on your next production? I'd love to work with you. Let's get that process started at timflansbaum.com. And if you have a question, ask it in the comments and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.